How do we get the Aspar app working? Let's start from the beginning. Depending on the device you have, whether PC, iOS or Android, go to your App Store and search for Aspar Professional Consult and click download. Set up a new account This is Aspar Mobile App, an e-learning platform created by Aspar Professional Consult, a registered partner in learning of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. The Aspar Mobile App is created for aspiring chartered accountants and, of course, for people who have interest in accounting. Aspar brings trainee accountants together, allowing for open communication through live video sessions or face-to-face -face classroom lectures. Let me show you what I mean. Maybe you are traveling out of town or visiting a sick granny, but you're worried about missing out on the strategic case study lecture, which is crucial for completing your ICAG program to secure your dream job. That's why you need the Aspire app. Aspire app gives you access to a whole library of recorded videos, audio, eBooks, and documents from verified and qualified lecturers in the field. ASPA also gives students access codes to join face-to-face -face Zoom video calls, allowing you to ask your questions and join in discussions. So, whether you're a student member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, an SHS graduate, an MBA or first degree holder looking to qualify as a chartered accountant, ASPA is the app for you. ASPA is secure and very mindful of your student details. Use ASPA on your desktop, tablet, all on the go. Register for free and sign up to start using Aspire app today. Go to AspireProConsult.com or visit the App Store or Play Store. Aspire mobile app. Life made easy. So, how do we get the Aspire app working? Let's start from the beginning. Depending on the device you have, whether PC, iOS or Android, Go to your App Store and search for Aspire Professional Consult and click Download. Set up a new account by creating your own unique username and password and complete the process by clicking Register. The app interface opens and you click to open the Register portal to complete a form to choose your program. You will get an instant mail with your bill and unique student number. Make payment via Momo using the student ID as reference and you will be granted access to your subject portal. And that's it. You can now have full access to our library of recorded videos, documents, eBooks, and audio files at your own convenience. Aspire app also gives you opportunity to receive job alerts, buy books, and book a training all at a go. Aspire mobile app, life made easy.
This is Aspar Mobile Lab, an e-learning platform created by Aspar Professional Consult, a registered partner in learning of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. The Aspar Mobile Lab is created for aspiring chartered accountants and, of course, for people who have interest in accounting. Aspar brings trainee accountants together, allowing for open communication through live video sessions or face-to-face -face classroom lectures. Let me show you what I mean. Maybe you are traveling out of town or visiting a sick granny, but you're worried about missing out on the strategic case study lecture, which is crucial for completing your ICAG program to secure your dream job. That's why you need the Aspire app. Aspire app gives you access to a whole library of recorded videos, audio, eBooks, and documents from verified and qualified lecturers in the field. Aspire also gives students access codes to join face-to-face -face Zoom video calls, allowing you to ask your questions and join in discussions. So, whether you're a student member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, an SHS graduate, an MBA or first degree holder looking to qualify as a chartered accountant, Aspire is the app for you. Aspire is secure and very mindful of your student details. Use Aspire on your desktop, tablet, or on the go. Register for free and sign up to start using Aspire app today. Go to aspireproconsult.com or visit the App Store or Play Store. Aspar Mobile App, life made easy. So, how do we get the Aspar app working? Let's start from the beginning. Depending on the device you have, whether PC, iOS or Android, go to your App Store and search for Aspar Professional Consult and click download. Set up a new account by creating your own unique username and password and complete the process by clicking register. The app interface opens and you click to open the register portal to complete a form to choose your program. You will get an instant mail with your bail and unique student number. Make payment via Momo using the student ID as a reference and you will be granted access to your subject portal. And that's it. You can now have full access to our library of recorded videos, documents, eBooks, and audio files at your own convenience. Aspire app also gives you opportunity to receive job alerts, buy books, and book a training all at a go. Aspire mobile app, life made easy. This is Aspar Mobile Lab, an e-learning platform created by Aspar Professional Consult, a registered partner in learning of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. The Aspar Mobile App is created for aspiring chartered accountants and, of course, for people who have interest in accounting. Aspar brings trainee accountants together, allowing for open communication through live video sessions or face-to-face -face classroom lectures. Let me show you what I mean. Maybe you are traveling out of town or visiting a sick granny, but you're worried about missing out on the strategic case study lecture, which is crucial for completing your ICAG program to secure your dream job. That's why you need the Aspire app. Aspire app gives you access to a whole library of recorded videos, audio, eBooks, and documents from verified and qualified lecturers in the field. Aspire also gives students access codes to join face-to-face -face Zoom video calls, allowing you to ask your questions and join in discussions. So, whether you're a student member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, an SHS graduate, an MBA or first degree holder looking to qualify as a chartered accountant, Aspire is the app for you. 
ASPA is secure and very mindful of your student details. Use ASPA on your desktop, tablet, or on the go. Register for free and sign up to start using ASPA app today. Go to asparaproconsult.com or visit the App Store or Play Store. ASPA mobile app, life made easy. So, how do we get the Aspar app working? Let's start from the beginning. Depending on the device you have, whether PC, iOS or Android, go to your App Store and search for Aspar Professional Consult and click Download. Set up a new account by creating your own unique username and password and complete the process by clicking Register. The app interface opens and you click to open the Register portal to complete a form to choose your program. You will get an instant mail with your bill and unique student number. Make payment via Momo using the student ID as a reference and you will be granted access to your subject portal. And that's it. Live uh, from 12 noon. So, for those who may not be able to join us today, they can still join us on Sunday, 12 noon. And then for our weekend students who might join us on Sunday, uh, they should all take note that the lecture will start from uh, 12 o'clock, not the usual uh, 12, uh, 1.30. So kindly take note of that. So we are starting. So we are all gathered trying to look at our first uh, pilot case for strategic case study. Right. I will, as was the case last sitting in the exam, now it looks like our cases that we shall be having in the exam will have resemblance to companies already in the country that is already performing or at a very good level of performance. So if you saw from what we had last sitting, last sitting uh, strategic case study, let me put what I, we are doing on the board. So last sitting strategic case study paper was mainly built around earnest chemists. Last sitting's strategic case study paper was mainly built around earnest chemists. Are we clear? So that was the entity that was used to develop the case. So there, were so there was so much resemblance of the information that was used. And some of you who had joined us, especially because it's a revision class, some of you were able to join us for our last revision last sitting. You can clearly tell we were able to preempt most of the issues in line with that particular entity. Are we clear? So it's the same thing that will happen. Uh, going forward, and we need to start revising, planning for the eventual day. So, I have decided to begin the revision using some industries which are yet to be tested. And specifically, looking at our main case for the day, we are looking at the real estate industry. We are looking at the real estate industry. So, please take note of that, that in the last sitting exam specifically, it was the pharmaceutical industry. And that was a combination of both pharmaceutical and manufacturing, sort of. Are we clear? So that is what happened last sitting. And in this particular exam, uh, or this particular sitting, this question is going to be double-edged. Because it's going to look at both construction as well as real estate, if you look at it. That's the aim of what I want to achieve with this. So whatever happened in the exam, if there's a case on construction, at least we have some fundamentals in line with this. If the case is about real estate, we still have some normal knowledge in language. Are we clear? So that no matter whatever the question comes in the exam we are supposed to write, issues on construction or real estate, we have done some fundamental discussion. Are we clear? So this case will be with us from now to almost the end of August, where we will release another, another session. There will be another one released towards the end of August, and another one will be released in September. So we we'll have three cases for major discussion. And as I've said, the emphasis is on industries yet to be examined in the exam. So please pay serious attention to this because it's for your own work. It's for your own progress. Are we clear? But the earlier we discuss the industries, when the precinct comes, it makes things a bit more easier. Are we clear? So thank you all for joining us for this session. As I said, this is the first session. This is the first session. You can hear the mic, right? Uh, Mike, I think our audio in the room. Okay, right. So kindly give us some time. But you can hear me, right? Okay, for now. If you can hear me, that's fine. So we have a slight challenge with the audio here, but I think it's fine now. It's coming, right? 
Right. This one is coming. This one is coming. So we should be fine in a bit. So this particular question is on the real estate. Now I'm going to share with you the entities that I have used in developing this case. I hope you are listening. Because I said it should be common knowledge, like what we saw last city. After a few research, we were all able to identify that the case was about NS chemists. Are we clear? So the same thing is going to happen with this entity or with this particular company. Even though I chose to name it Veritas Properties, Veritas Properties Limited, are we clear? The original concept, I picked it from two entities. That is Regimanual Gray Estate. Regimanual uh, Gray Estate Limited. And the second entity that I picked from is uh, Devtraco. So this Devtraco Estate Development, Devtraco Estate Development Limited. So these are my two entities that the scenarios have been built around. So please take note of that. So if there will be any possible issues that may come in the unseen, I will be sharing with you. Basically, it will be in line with these entities. Are we clear? So please take note of that. If there, because this is the advanced information. The prior information before I will give you the unseen. So let's simulate it like we have in the exam. The exam that we are writing, you will be having an advanced information. Two weeks to the exam. Are we clear? So what we have here is the advanced information. It has no question. It's just giving you information about the entity. So in about a week time, I'll share with you the unseen, which will be an information relevant to the same entity with further information for you to resolve. Are we clear? With a question to go with it. So that's how the exam is. So if you saw from what we have here, it's about 10 pages. Are we clear? Like what we had last sitting. Last sitting case was almost about 10 pages. Are we clear? So this is the entities that I have built the cases around. Regimanual Great Estate, and then the Traco Limited. Are we clear? And I'll be using uh, this case to discuss some important models. I'll be listening. Some more important models which are carefully chosen. Are we clear? Based on what is yet to be tested. Based on the various models which the chief examiner is yet to test. So we'll be mainly dwelling on those models. So please follow me as we do this test. So our models we shall be looking at, okay, our models that we shall be uh, dealing with, I'll be listing them for you to look at them. So our first model that we shall be using this case to analyze is the Mendelo matrix. The Mendelo matrix. It has not yet been tested, as you are aware. As I've already shared with the normal class, Issues on purpose have already been tested. But there has not been any question on expectation, which is about stakeholders. Are we clear? So basically, the reason for choosing this model is because I want us to do a, a proper discussion on issues of stakeholder analysis, which has not yet been tested. Are we clear? And that is issues on expectations. Are we clear? And this Mendelo matrix will be dwelling specifically on the one which has what we call power. And what? Interest. We'll be using the specific one called power and what? Interest. For those who are part of our normal class, the Mandela matrix for power and interest is basically used to analyze external stakeholders. Are you aware? It's mainly used to analyze external or stakeholders. It's used to analyze external stakeholders. So please take note of that. I'll be clear. So what we, who is the stakeholder? Anyone who has interest, is that clear, in what the entity seeks to achieve? Are we clear? So if you are trying to analyze stakeholders, we'll be using the Mendelo matrix to analyze the power and interest of external or stakeholders. So to do an effective understanding of this, please listen to this carefully. To have an important analysis of this, we need to know the sources of power for both internal and external stakeholders. Please be mindful of that. We need to know what? The sources of power. Let me clean this and put it right. We need to know what? The sources of power of both internal and or external or stakeholders. Are we clear? But because this model is purposely for external stakeholders, 
and rather we should dwell on the external stakeholder. I hope you are following. Rather we dwell on the external or stakeholder. So sources of power of external stakeholders. Sources of power of external stakeholders. Sorry for that. External stakeholder. So what are the sources of power of external stakeholder? Malik, take off. <laughs> what are the sources of power of external stakeholders? Yes? Yes? The sources. Who can mention all four? No shared responsibility. Sources of power. Yes, madam. Come again. The proportion of interest. If you can explain. No answer is wrong in strategy. The state they hold. Hmm. This point is troubling me. It's troubling me. But I want us to go with the ones we've already shared in class. Which we've discussed already. Are you aware? So that any other ones, when we are discussing, maybe it's not in part of what we have. So that we take it. Are we clear? So what were the ones we discussed in class? Malik. <laughs> yes? I think one of them is laws and regulation. Laws and what? Regulation. So if that external stakeholder has the power to regulate you, to put up a new law, clearly they have power. Clearly they have uh, power. Then we spoke about the... Is that? Yeah, knowledge and skill also. Lovely answer. Thank you for that person online. Knowledge and skills. Very, very good answer. Your level of dependence. Rona, your level of dependence on this stakeholder. Your level of dependence. Are we clear? What else? The involvement. Lovely. Your level of... In, the level of involvement of that stakeholder in helping you to achieve your strategic goals. Are we clear? So basically that is it. So these are the ones that the manual has provided us as the sources of power of an external world stakeholder. I hope you are with me. So now that we know the sources of power, exactly, the power can either be weak or what? Strong, if you remember, according to this matrix. So can we draw the Mandela matrix, specifically uh, the power and interest model? Can we draw that? Let's do that quickly. The power and interest uh, model. So I'll put it at this side so that we discuss it. Because, please, after this discussion, the unseen information will have a question on this. So I'm just drawing your mind to what may happen. The unseen or case that you have, in addition to this, will have a particular question in relation to that. And if I should share the question with you, I will say that using a relevant model, analyze the importance of the key stakeholders of what? Of what? VPL, what they call limited. Exactly. And the strategic responses that they may want, they may have to take in respect of them. I'll put a nice question across, specifically on stakeholder. And without the Mandelo, you can't write anything. Are we clear? The Mandelo metrics on power and what? Interest. So if you are ready, can you see from the back? Is it fine? Lovely. So I, I think we can draw the metrics now. So let's put together that metrics as we do the discussion. So those online, if you have any question, my technical team is ready to pick them for me. So you can always share it as you prefer. Thank you in advance as you ask your question. So quickly, let's draw the metrics. So what is normally on top? Interest. Normally on top of this model is interest. Are we clear? Then on the side of this model is the power. Is the war the power. So the power can be weak or what? Strong. I will, I will be with me. Then when it comes to the interest, the interest can be low or the interest can be what? Can be high. If you look at the metrics, are we clear? So now let's take it quickly. Now if a stakeholder has high interest, that is, they are willing to know what you are doing and what you seek to achieve. That's interest. Are we clear? And that stakeholder, their power is weak. How can you deal with such a stakeholder? How would you strategically manage that type of stakeholder? Keep them or keep them informed. Are we clear? And what are examples of those type of stakeholder? A customer. We, spe we, we spoke about this some time back. So if the stakeholder, that's the first issue, I hope you are listening. If that stakeholder has high interest, I hope you know the quadrant we are now. 
high interest, weak power. Exactly. That particular stakeholder is seen to be a customer. So what do we do? We keep them all. Well. We keep them keep informed. Because they must continue to know what you are doing or what you seek to achieve. Are we clear? So if the stakeholder has high interest but weak power, clearly you keep them informed. Are we clear? But what if that stakeholder has high power or let's say not high power, strong power and high interest? How do we call such a stakeholder or how do we manage such a stakeholder? We see that stakeholder as a key word, as a key player. Are we clear? A key player. And for those of you who have already read the case, those of you who have already read the case, did you see that the introduction of the case mentions some key players? I don't know whether you've read it too. <laughs> for the thing was shared since yesterday. Whether it is with you and it's not yet impaired. As, is the document impaired? <laughs> or oh, it's still at fair value? <laughs> By now you should have overly read it. So key players, they've given you a list of key players in the real estate industry. What were they? Oh, who were they? When we read the case, we look at them. Is that clear? They spoke about the, the developers. Is that not it? What else? The agents. Who else? Landlords and land owners. I hope you see that there. So those are the things you must discuss in the question I'll be giving to you. Is that clear? So any question on the Mandela metric, specifically the power and interest, that's the form you to take. A case may not even give, I gave it to you. But another case that may come may not give it to you. So you should be the one thinking around the industry given. Is that clear? Pick the information of the key players and discuss them. Are we getting the But there could be a question where the examiner will not give you the key players. But you must look for them. Is that clear? Discuss their relevance and how they may impact our strategy formulation. Are we clear? But in this case, I've given it to you. Information on each of them. And telling you how each of them are organized, their influences, and all of that. I don't know whether you read it, but the way some of you are watching me is not nice, bro. <laughs> have you read it, Julie? Have you read it? Or when we are reading the case, we come for it. Are we clear? When we start reading the case, we start connecting. But I must build the technical issues before we get there. Because when I start reading, and you have no technical accuracy, you just be hearing it like English comprehension. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the challenge will come. So I want to build the technical issues before we take the case. Are we clear? So we'll do that. The next one. What if that stakeholder, the power is strong, uh, but his interest is low? How do we manage them? That stakeholder, should we keep them satisfied? We keep them all satisfied. So in the real estate industry, exactly, which particular stakeholders do you think we must keep satisfied? Yes? Which particular stakeholders do you think we should keep satisfied? Start thinking about it. Start war. When we are discussing the real estate industry, you know, there are so many players. The one that you were giving is different, too. There are other players like what? Uh -huh. The Ghana Lands Commission, two of us, for registration of land. What about AME? You need that. Is that clear? For you to get your site permit. We'll discuss all those stakeholders. So that you are able to discuss their real and perceived influences on the entity. I hope you are listening. The examiner already, or this case already gave you the main, the key players. But there are other ones who are external, whose influences you must discuss. And analyze it in terms of their power and their what? Their interest. So it's, a, it's an interesting development. As I said, we'll do this so that if it comes in the exam, there's no real threat to us. Are we clear? Then the last one, which is normally those with the worst of both. That is low interest and weak power. How do we manage them? Normally, minimal work. We normally give them the minimal effort. Are we clear? Minimal effort. Are we clear? So, for those that we need to keep satisfied, if you are a real estate company, who must you keep satisfied? Uh, GRA will come after you, two of us. Need to come after you, two of us. We spoke about that. This particular stakeholder, Exactly. Do not care what... They don't have interest in your sources. No, no, no. But they have a power to enforce anything on you. Are we clear? So GRA, they are about tasks. They don't care whether you succeed or not. <laughs> SNIT is about staff contribution. Whether you are making profit or not, pay the contribution of staff. Are we clear? We spoke about that. What about the minimal effort? Which stakeholder will fall in that category? The general world. 
the general public. So please take note of that, the general or public. So please be mindful. When we pick this model, we are clear. For the key players, it is given in the case. So as we are reading the case, we'll be going over it. We'll be going over it. But if the question comes in the exam, it's not only about discussing the key players. You must also mention the other type of stakeholders. Are we clear? Like the general public, like the customers, like the statutory bodies like Smith and GRA, who enforce their laws on you. Are we clear? So be mindful of that. Even though the case spoke only about the key players, you must go beyond the world, the key players. Any question? Any question on the Mandelo metrics? So if there will be a question in the exam, looking at the way the syllabus has been framed, the examiner's focus is on the power and interest model. Are we clear? It's mainly on the power and interest world model. So please, let's pay serious attention to this. Are we clear? So, without much ado, I'll do a brief overview, because it's around 6. Let me do a brief overview of what we've discussed so far. So, what have I been saying in the last 15 minutes? For anybody who just joined us. Because, Mike, I know some people are just joining. <laughs> I know some people are just joining. And they may not even know what we've been discussing. I'm talking about online. <laughs> Matt, is not about you. There's some people who have just joined online, so I want to bring them on board. So, what we are saying is that, in the last sitting exam, the strategic case we had was on which entity? NS Chemist. Exactly, but the entity which was brought was not NS chemist. Exactly. So we are saying that going forward, cases we shall be having may have resemblance to entities already existing in Ghana. Yeah. Where they will pick their information and make some changes and relate it to you. So last sitting, the case was about NS chemist. And I have just shared a case with you which we are about to discuss. And I've told you specifically that this case is about two entities. What are their names? Regimanua Gray Estate and what? The Traco Estate Development. So this particular case is revolving around those two entities. Are we clear? So if there will be any subsequent questions, if there will be any modeling I will do after, it will be in line with this entity. So be mindful of that. Are we clear? Then we said that over the period per the sittings we have so far, there has not been any question on expectation. There has not been any question on what? Expectation and that is basically about stakeholder issues, stakeholder or issues. And I said specifically that looking at our syllabus, stakeholder issues is that clear? We analyze stakeholders using what the Mandelo metrics, and that metrics is the metrics about what power and what interest. We'll be putting power and interest on the quadrant and discuss the various type of stakeholders. Are we clear? And we said the power and interest model is used for which type of stakeholder? external stakeholders the power and interest model is used for who external stakeholders so we said that for you to understand this model very well what must you do you must be able to what to know the source of power of an external stakeholder i hope you can see that the sources of power of external stakeholders so we spoke about them you might put your hand down <laughs> The source of power of external stakeholders. What are they? Number one is laws and what? Regulation. Number two is what? Their knowledge and skill. Number three is what? Your level of dependence. And number four is their level of involvement in your strategic development. Are we clear? So that power, exactly, makes their, all these factors make their power either strong or what? Weak. Are we clear? So we said that once you know that their power can be what? Can be strong or weak. You can plot it on the quadrant. And that is what we've seen so far. So we saw the quadrant. We specifically, we have so far discussed. So that quadrant says that what? There are two things we are plotting. Power and what? Interest. Have you seen it? So for power, power can either be strong or what? Weak. For interest, interest can either be low or what? High. So we said that if a particular stakeholder has high interest, but their power is weak. Exactly. A good example is customers. How do you strategically manage them? How do you strategically uh, manage such a stakeholder? You keep them uh, informed. Keep them uh, very good. Are we clear? But if you have a stakeholder who has high interest and the power is strong, exactly, like we saw in the question, next case, that stakeholder is a key player. It's a key word. Uh, Player. So you must make sure you keep them involved in everything you are doing. Are we clear? You must make sure they are part 
of all your strategic world development. Now, if a stakeholder, specifically an external stakeholder, has low interest in your success, but their power is strong, how do you manage such a stakeholder? Or strategically, how do you respond to such a stakeholder? You keep them all satisfied. Keep them all satisfied. And a good example of that is what? GRE, SNIT, and the others. Are we clear? Those are statutory bodies who do not care about your success, but interested in what? Putting regulations, is that clear? In place to check you. Are we clear? Then the last one is those who have low interest, but weak power. That is the general public. Who we say that what? Those ones deserves minimal effort. That is it. So what is, what is the conclusion here? You'll be having a question which is going to be given to you in line with this case to discuss all the potential stakeholders that exactly this particular company exactly will be involved in and how each of them must be what? Must be responded to strategically. So that is the first question as I'll be putting across to you when you have the unseen information. Are we clear? So take note of that. There's a question online, Mike. Hurry up and we move. Can we relate this case to position and importance? Position and importance. Yes. Why not? Mm -hmm. If we can put a little light on the question of the internal state. You want us to do that. Why not? But looking at the way I have skewed this case, I've skewed it towards the external. Because, you know, for companies who are into real estate, they have a lot of external stakeholders to manage. Exactly. Land developers going in to buy land from chiefs. Exactly. As they are constructing, you may have to pollute the environment. So many external factors coming. So when it's real estate, basically you'll be looking at what? The power and what? Interest model. But why not? If you want us to do an overview of the position and interest model, then please join the normal class. It's a revision class. So we don't have patience for that. <laughs> land gas are external stakeholders. <laughs> So please, for the position and, uh, and uh, what do you call position and what importance model, I don't think it's necessary I discuss it. It's a revision class, but I think we have to make progress. Okay, if it's a normal class, I'll spend energy on such things. So please go and revise, go and revise. So let's not waste time. Let's go further. So we are done with the first issue, which is as I said, the question that we're putting across. The first issue will be about expectation. Are we clear? Let's move now. So my next area of questioning will be on the environment. Environment what analysis. So that will be question the next line of question we shall be having in line with this case. Environment what analysis. So as you already aware, as you already aware, all the environmental models have been tested except the five forces. Except what the five forces. So this case, if you look at the case, we've been told that VPL is a dominant what force in the market. I'll be aware. So clearly, they are leaders in the position of the market. So clearly, we'll be discussing the factors, exactly, that may pose a threat to the dominance of what? Of VPL. Clearly, the five forces. Clearly, what? The five forces. When we read the case, you connect it very soon. So that's the next question I'm going to ask you. What are the factors, exactly, that should be considered, which may pose what? A threat to the dominance of VPL. That's five forces. I don't know whether you hear that clearly. Exactly. Because anything that poses a threat to an entity, exactly, in the competitive environment, is clearly about the five forces. Are we clear? So our case, specifically this particular case, will be discussing what the five what, forces. Are we clear? Which has not yet been tested. Pester has been tested. Uh, what do you call it? The Portes Diamond has already been what, tested. But with this case, we'll do the five forces and we'll add also the Portes Diamond, which was tested far back November 2019. Far back November 2019. So we'll not lose sight of that. So the next one we'll add is what? The Portes Diamond. So two models. I hope you are listening to me carefully. Two models. The Portes what? The Portes Diamond. So we'll be discussing when it comes to the questions I'll put across on this case. On the environment, it will be what the five forces and the Portes or diamond. And why am I discussing Portes diamond? Because if you read from the case, the entity is about to go to Sierra Leone and Liberia. Are you aware of that? Are you aware of that? As part of the chairman's outlook. If you have not read the case, don't look at me like that. 
Because once you have the advanced information, it's something you must eat. Are we clear? When we have the advanced information, I normally read it from 12 midnight to 4 a.m. Yeah, for a, whole, a week to the exam. I do it constantly. Exactly. Trying to play into the mind of the examiner to preempt questions that will come. I hope you are following. So it's a tough way. So you don't just take the case and just do it casually. You won't see anything. You only be seeing English. I hope you are getting it over. You have to try and possibly preempt the possible strategic issues that the person may want to put across to you. Are we clear? If you see this case, do you see five forces? <laughs> you may, you, you understand? So it's the models that we are going to connect. And when we read, you see the technical issues in the very soon. So take note of that. So with five forces, you already know that there are two threats. Are you aware? Two powers and one what? One rivalry. So it is not for me to discuss. It's a revision class. It is not for me to discuss these models. It's a revision class. I'm only drawing your attention to them. Better get your table and chair on them. But once the question comes, you must provide solution. And in the next meeting, if your solution is not here, please don't. You are not going to be welcome. If you don't bring your solution along, you are not invited. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, you have to do the question and bring the solution. It's a revision class. So you bring the solution for us to discuss, and I'll ask you, where is your solution? Read the points you have noted for me. I hope you are listening. So that you don't just come and hear mine and go. You won't learn anything if you do that. Attempt it. If I correct you, you learn better. So don't come casual. If you don't have your solution, just excuse us. I want to see what you have written, so that what? I will also correct you. Then we are perfect. Are we clear? So please take note of that. It's a serious advice I'm putting across. So with the threats, what are the threats? New entrant, substitute. Threat of what? New entrant and what? Substitute. For the power is about the customer and suppliers. For the, the rivalry is about competitive war. Right, as we are already aware. You see, I was right, reciting it. I just said that. <laughs> so with the power of, uh, or the threat of new entrant, can somebody mention some of the factors that may influence the power of a new entrant? Can you mention them? Uh-huh. Economies of scale, is that not it? Cost of investment or initial capital, is that not it? Uh, regulation by government, is that not it? I already mentioned economies of scale, right? Not it? What else? The knowledge and skill required in entering into the industry. Are we clear? Why not? Yes. What? Time, yes, time. And we spoke about that when it comes to fashion. Are we clear? So all those are points that will help you to discuss the what? The factors that influence what? The threat of new or entrance. Are we clear? Then what about the threat of substitute? Threat of substitute. The threat of substitute is you have to discuss their existence, their performance, the relativeness in price, the trend. Uh, I beg you, this revision class, don't watch me like that. The only thing, boy, I guess so you are not learning. And those of you who are part of the normal class, and you are waiting for when to learn, I beg you. <laughs> so those are the points you must have. So that when you are explaining the issues, it's in line. For the real estate, if this company is due to, uh, what do you call it, the development of properties, what are the substitutes to this particular company? What are the substitutes? The home provided by all landlords. Home provided by all landlords is their substitute. If you are a real estate developer, your substitute is the home provided by all the landlords. Because the person may want to rather rent, is that not it, than buy. So that becomes the substitute. Exactly. For substitute, what is the division of substitute? Similar product, is that not it, offering the same function or benefit. Remember that? That is it. So we'll be having all the discussions. So please, we are going to do a five forces analysis of which industry? The real estate world industry. So please note that. So you must start that before you come. When we come, we'll do it together. Are we clear? We'll look at all the five forces within all the real estate world industry. So that when we go into the exam, assuming this is a case for the exam we are preempting, why not? We are able to do the best in the exam. Are we clear? Then for, what about the, the powers of customer and the world? The power of the supplier. Yes? How will you discuss that? If you already know in Ghana, we are being told that there's a housing deficit of how much in the case? Two billion. So that should tell you already that once there's a deficit, who has the power? The suppliers. I hope you are listening. So in discussing your 
powers of customer and supplier, that is a cogent point to explain that. Are you here? That is it. So we are going to do five forces on the real estate world industry. And this is not about discussing of theory. You have to discuss and link it to the real issues happening now, either in the case or in the country. Are we clear? So it's not about mentioning uh, the factors I was mentioning under the five forces. That is theory. Exactly. This is a case. So you must apply it based on what is actually all happening. Are we clear? Because the five forces you learn, did it tell you about the housing deficit of two billion? No. But that is a point which, if you read the case, you must be able to see to do the discussion. Are we clear? So take note of that. What about the rivalry? What about the rivalry? The rivalry mainly is about the players who are in the industry. Exactly. And for the players, is it easy for them to exit? When it comes to real estate, will it be easy for you to exit the industry? No. Because of the level of investment. So when you don't exit, what is the problem? It means that players will remain even though they are not profitable. Players will still work, remain in the industry even though they are not well, profitable. Therefore, reinforcing the rivalry. And the more the rivalry, the lower the profit. Are you aware? The more the rivalry, the lower well, the profit. So please, I will wish you start, as I said, I will send you your question and you have to do an extensive work on this. Exactly. So five forces on the real estate world industry. Are we clear? As I've already said, those of us joining the revision class, please, just make sure you are joining the normal class. As some of us said, just joining revision. This sitting, I've made the normal class free for you to join. So that your technical issues are well grounded. I'll be getting the point. Don't discount it. You may have gotten 45 marks in the last sitting exam. It does not mean that it's the same you are burning on 45. Sometimes that's the misconception. Last sitting in your 45, in Timmy Fisher, met him yesterday, I cried, I come in slow. Case never, but you're different. I'll be getting the point. So take yourself like you have not read anything. Take it from the basics. Exactly. So I'm advising that all those who are, who are waiting for revision, waiting for final intervention, please, your technical issues are very important because other than that, you may not even see the issues in the case or how to uh, relate them. Let's go to the next thing. Potter's diamond. Are you ready? So why did we say we must discuss the Potter's diamond? Why? Because this company is about to go to Liberia and what? Sierra Leone. Now, why did, I, why did I choose this? Because the two entities I've chosen, exactly, the Traco is in Liberia. I hope you are listening. Uh, Regimanua is in Sierra Leone and even in Tanzania. Are we clear? They have partnerships with government in those countries and they are developing properties there. Are we clear? So there will be a decision made by this company in the question I'll be giving to you to go international. That is, move out of the country. And in order to move out, I hope you are listening, you must discuss what? The competitive advantage, is that clear? That the real estate in industry in Ghana has over the real estate industry in West Africa. That's the question. Exactly. The advantages that what? The real estate industry in Ghana has over what? The real estate industry in what? West Africa. If you want to have a good understanding of this, go and pick November 2019 question. Question number one. That was on the tourism industry. The advantages that the Ghanaian world tourism industry have over the tourism industry in West Africa. Question number one, November 2019 case study. But this time, it's not about tourism. It's about what? The real estate. It's about what? The real estate. So we're going to use Portes Diamond to do that. We'll analyze the Ghana's competitive advantage it has over what? the real estate industry in West Africa. So we are using Diamond to achieve that. Are so please, let's take note of that. Because so many companies are coming into Ghana to develop properties because they see that Ghana has what? a comparative advantage over what? other West African countries. So tell me why they are coming to Ghana. Are we clear? Tell me why they are coming to Ghana. Because the more we have an advantage, that is the reason why our own companies can go to other West African countries and succeed. That is what has happened. So as I've said, Reggie Manuel is in where? Where are they now? I said they are in Sierra Leone. They are in Tanzania. Exactly. The Franco is in where? Liberia. Why are they moving to these West African countries? It's because we have an advantage. We have what? A competitive advantage. So when we compare ourselves to those countries, comparatively, we are better. 
So your job is to discuss what gives Ghana the advantage exactly over the West African countries. And what are those factors? Number one is what? The, number one is what? Favorable factor or condition. Are we clear? Fa let's put them down. Favorable favorable factor condition. Number two is what? The demand what? The demand condition. The third one is what? The, the firm structure. The firm structure. Rivalry and what? And strategy. And what's the last one? Related and what? And supporting what? Industry. Related and supporting what? Industry. So when it comes to the favorable factor condition, does Ghana have skilled architects? Does Ghana have a skilled architect? Because the, the favorable factor conditions is when your factor conditions, you have more advanced than basic. Remember I said that? So you have to discuss skilled labor. Is that not it? Uh, good road networks. Remember? If, if, what do you call it? Telecommunication. Those things which are advanced factors. Does Ghana have more? If they have, then it's what is making the country favorable for the development of real estate. How, that's how come we have a better real estate industry than the West African or neighbors. Are we clear? Then the demand condition. Do Ghanaians buy homes? Do Ghanaians buy homes? Yes. So if Ghanaians buy homes, the companies in Ghana, is that clear, will have a good basis to move outside. Because they would have been able to understand the sophistication of the local demand. The sophistication of what? The local demand. So as to build on that to move international. Are we clear? Then the first structure, rivalry, and strategy. Why not? Looking at the kind of structure we have, we have greater. I hope you are aware. That should tell you that the developers are regulated. Exactly. So all those things will inform the firm structure, exactly, the rivalry, and then what? Their strategy. And if you look at it, their strategy now is to go international. Looking at the current trend. And then the related and what? Supporting industry. Are we clear? What are the related industries? The construction companies. The, if, you look, if you take a good example, like Casaco Valley, they have Micheletti. Is that not it? They have, uh, what's the other one? The, the roofing company. No, not DBS. Royal, Royal Roofing is for Tresaco. Are we clear? Then they also have uh, the one at Tetequashi where they sell the kitchen and the other things. Casa Tresaco. So if you look at it, we'll be looking at the industry and those related issues like the roofing sheet, those who provide roofing sheet, those who provide the concrete blocks, exactly, those who provide furniture, those are the related industry for the real estate too. So when we are having that discussion, those are the things we'll be discussing there whether they exist, and whether they are supporting us in the industry. So please, it's a tall order, and I hope you are ready for it. I hope you are ready for it. <laughs> so better sit up. The exam is no joke. <laughs> okay? So these are the two models we'll be looking at in the environment. I hope you are clear with them. So we'll be doing the five forces and the Porter's World Diamond. The two models relevant for the environmental analysis. So if you are clear, let's do the last issue before we start reading the case. Any question on this? Online or in person? Any question on these two models? Is there anything you don't understand with this model? State it, we discuss it, and we move ahead. Is there anything you don't understand about these two models? So the only one we haven't discussed is the PESTA. And PESTA was tested not long ago. Exactly, two sittings ago. Pester was tested. So please, that's why I'm looking at the other ones, which specifically five forces yet to be tested. Protest Diamond, so far away, November 2019. So any other issues, please, we'll be looking at it. So we are done with the environment. So we'll move from here. Now, my last issue, specifically on position. I hope you have seen that all my issues are on strategic positions. Exactly. I'm still on position. I've not moved to choices. <laughs> I'm still on what? Strategic war position. Are you aware? <laughs> so where am I going next? My next discussion is the SWOT. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Can 
Can, yes, you can look at them from that perspective also. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So we'll do the SWOT. And then I'm going to discuss SWOT. Tools. And then we'll the SWOT model. Most of us have disregarded this model. The SWOT analysis. And some of us may be hearing it for the first time. It's like the way we've seen the Rosa Canter. It's like the way you saw the Rosa Canter and say, Enu su frihi, e she mubi. Enu su she mubi. We su she mubi. How be agadini? You saw Rosa Canter and say, Mami ben na omudi ni asababai. After that, some were kissing the woman. <laughs> oh, you didn't see that? They were insulting her or some of her platform. But you see, the problem with our students is that when they saw question one, question two, they were destabilized. I see those were the only two questions available. I hope you're getting the point. And it's intentional. Because if the first two questions destabilize you, why would you even read the others? When there was balance scorecard, when there was business plan, when there was transfer pricing, when there was BOMA, what, what, what else do you want to be given to you? Four questions within your remit, you can pass. <laughs> so if question one and two is not your problem, it's your level of what? Courage in facing the exam. <laughs> because if you see question one and two, you are destabilized, how can you remember your boomer? Well, some people are drawing pie chart. Instead of boomer, they were drawing pie chart. They draw zero and draw some lines there. <laughs> it is well. So let's go. So SWOT was already tested. When was SWOT tested? June 2020, during COVID. SWOT has already been tested. Are you aware? <laughs> are you aware that the examiner has already tested us on SWOT? May, that was the May exam, May 2020. It couldn't come off in May because of Corona. So that exam was written around June, remember? That was when we had SWOT analysis. It was July, right? Yeah. That was when we had the SWOT analysis. Question number one was for you to prepare the SWOT. That was question one. Prepare all the SWOT. Exactly. The question two was about explain the key ones. Explain what? The key ones. So out of the SWOT that you've prepared, discuss some of the key ones. Uh, so people were confused because they don't know the difference between preparing a SWOT and explaining the key ones. <laughs> it shall be well. So a SWOT mainly prepared, normally it's a listing. It's what? A listing. So let, can we discuss one of those things? So normally it will be a strength. Is that not it? It will be your strength and your what? Your weakness. So for those who were part of our class, our normal class, what did I tell you about the strength and weakness? I said, if you are discussing strength and weakness, and the points are not coming from your resources, exactly, or your competence, or issues on your capability, issues on your what? Your capability, then clearly the, any of the points there is not a strength or weakness. I'll be clear. So as you are discussing strengths and weaknesses, the issues that you'll be pointing out, each of them should be related to your resources, your competence, and your what? Your capability. Are we clear? Those are the areas you pick them from. From the resources, what kind of resources? What kind of resources? Unique what? Unique resource. For competence, what kind of competence? Sustainable core competence. Remember? Sustainable what? Yes, we spoke about that. Sustainable core competence. So when your points are being listed, and we cannot see these things in there, clearly it shows there are challenges. Then I also spoke about some types of capability, remember? Dynamic capability, is that not it? Is that not it? Cost efficiency capability, remember? I also spoke about corporate knowledge. They are all various types of what? Capability. Dynamic capability is how you can respond to your environment. Remember? We also spoke about the cost efficiency capability. All of that. We spoke about them specifically. So, as you are mentioning your points on strengths and weaknesses, make sure that the issues are about uniqueness of your resources or not, the competencies you have, the ones which are core and sustainable, and then your capability. Are we clear? So, that is it. So, we mentioned some of them. Remember? Can somebody mention some strengths for me? Or maybe when we are reading the case, we'll take some of them. Exactly. When we are reading the case, we'll be picking some of them. So, what about opportunity and threat? What about opportunity and threat? 
Those are basically from the external environment. Are we clear? And normally, when you are picking opportunity and trade, you normally use the environmental models. The pestle, is that not it? The five forces, sorry, yes, five forces, and then the poor test were diamond. You can use these models to generate the opportunity and trade. Are we clear? You can use these models to generate the opportunity and what? And threats. Any question? Any question for me? Any question? So once you prepare your SWOT, which will give you your resource, your competence, is that not it? Sorry, your strength and your weakness. So let me circle that. Your strength and your weakness. Your opportunities and what? Your threats. Once you have all your those points, you put them in a tabular form and explain it. Are we clear? So that is it. Then what about the toes analysis? What about the toes analysis? Normally we use the toes exactly to provide some strategic responses from the SWOT. So normally we have some options, remember? The toes, we have some options like the SO option, remember? What are some other ones we have? We have the WO option. We have the ST option. And then we have the WT option. So these are the four options available. So what is the SO option? Strength and what? Opportunity. So what is the keyword? Strength are utilized or deploy to take advantage of opportunities or exploit world opportunities. We spoke about that in the normal class. Is that clear? So normally, strength, what do we do with strength? Uh, let me give you those words before we go. Strength, you could what? Utilize them. Or you could what? Deploy them. Are we clear? For opportunity, what can you do with it? For opportunity, you can, you, you can exploit or you can what? Take advantage of it. Are we clear? We spoke about that. So when is the SO option? We are either utilizing or deploying strength to take advantage or exploit our opportunity. And in a normal class, we did that. For its revision, I think all of us are fine. So we assume that we'll be able to do that because we're putting it into practice. Now what about the, the W? What do you do to the weaknesses? Weaknesses should be minimized Minimize or what? You must reduce them. You either minimize or you reduce. Are we clear? I think in the last question we had, there was obsolete plant. And in the normal class. And somebody said we should reduce the obsolete plant. Who remember that? <laughs> exactly. They said we should reduce the obsolete plant. So what did we say about that? We should take steps to replace the obsolete plant. So it's not like it's really using the language. Are we clear? It's about knowing what you're actually trying to achieve. Are we clear? Then what about the threat? For threat, you can either overcome or you what? You counter the threat. Are we clear? So that is it. So we are done. So now, this is the big news I'm going to tell you. In our ICA manual, there's no toes metrics. Are you aware? Are you aware? There's no toes metrics. So in the ICA manual, there's no toes metrics. So if we are learning it, we are learning it just in case they bring a question. But looking at where things are going, we need to learn it and learn the other one which has also been provided, which is the SOA world analysis. The SOA analysis. I hope you've seen it there. Have you seen the SOA analysis? Right. So what is the SOA analysis? The SOA analysis. What is this analysis about? What is the SOAR analysis about? Let me expand this a bit so that... Uh, so what is the SOAR analysis about? So now that we know that uh, we have our threats, our weaknesses and all of that, this model, exactly, its focus is on positive, not negativity. It focuses only on what? Positive. No what? Negativity. So it only takes your strength, exactly, takes your opportunity 
And then those strengths and opportunities, is that clear? Will be utilized to develop your aspirations. To develop what? Your aspirations. Are we clear? And then once you have your aspirations, you are able to develop your results. Or somebody will call it outcomes. Or somebody will call it uh, KPIs. Key performance indicators. Are we clear? So that is it. So this model does not focus on negativity. Because the, the premise on which this model is built, the understanding is that, exactly, weaknesses may be debated. May be debatable. Because what you see as a weakness, somebody may not see it as such. And then when it comes to threat, threat may not happen anyway. Exactly. There are certain threats that may be there, may never have happened. Or will not happen. So why don't you rather dwell on the things which are important? And what are those important things? Your strengths and what? Opportunities. That's the, pre the premise of this model. So it, it does not consider weaknesses. It does not consider threat. Because weaknesses are debatable, depending on where you are coming from. Threat may never happen. So rather, it focuses on your strengths and opportunities so that you can be able to develop your aspirations. Exactly. That is your desired future of what you want to achieve. Then based on that, you can link it to your world, your results. That is the KPIs. So please, this particular case we have, We'll be using it to do the SOAR analysis. Exactly. That's one of the reasons why we have this case. So this case, we'll be using it primarily to develop what? The SOAR analysis. So if you look at the case, you may struggle to see weaknesses. I don't know whether you read the case very well. You may struggle to read issues on what? Weaknesses. Are we clear? So that is it. Any question? So what is the way forward? Minimize is the same thing. So it's semantics. Depending on the word you want to use, you choose that. Are we clear? So that is it. Minimize or reduce. Or what other words can you use? <laughs> so you can get your own synonyms to the word reduce or minimize. Is that clear? But it depends on the context of the essay. So take note of that. Any question on the SOAR analysis? So this one is very practical. We'll be using it for this particular case. So that if the words happen, because already SWOT has been tested, there's no toes metrics in our manual. Anyway. So the next issue is the SOAR analysis. That is why I'm deriving or driving the discussion to this. So if you are ready, everybody should take their case. Let's get to business. Everybody should get their case. And my advice is that you should all get your hard copy so that you can make notes on them. I know my brother likes soft copy a lot. <laughs> so I think there are some soft copy around. Kweku, uh, can you give him a soft a hard copy? Or you still want the soft? You have the sub. Can you make notes in it? Lovely. If you can make notes, why not? Exactly. The man is very high tech. <laughs> so anybody who does not have the hard copy of the case, raise up your hand. Uh, Kweku will get it to you. Make sure when you are done, you come and sue a seat. <laughs> it is well. So we are done. So are we ready to read the case? Are you ready? So this exercise is not going to be in futility. We are not going to read this case and you don't come to the class with your solution. <laughs> so better get ready. So who so power? Get ready to bring my answers to me. Julie, <laughs> you So if there are no answers, don't approach the class. So we start. Can we start? So I'll be reading it technically. Exactly. I'll read it technically. So we'll be reading it and be making the points. Making the point. So that when you get the question, it will be easier for you to be able to answer the question. So read, listen carefully. And we'll do this in one hour. A technical review of the case. Are you ready? Let's take off. It says, real estate in Ghana. Is that clear? At a ballooning deficit of 2 million housing units. So that point alone, clearly we saw it as, we can see that point to be an opportunity. Please note it beside it, it's an opportunity an opportunity. Is that clear? At that point also, we saw it that it could be a factor that may affect the demand and supply. Is that clear? When we are discussing the five forces, remember? Whether the customer will have power or the suppliers will have uh, power. So the demand for real estate in Ghana will only continue to, uh, to grow. Now in that demand lies an investment or uh, opportunity. Clearly we're emphasizing that. Like no other, to make great returns. No. 
You want us to use soft copy? You want us to project it? Yes, yes. Yeah. If you can make, if you can go off, if you can take off my screen, so that we project it. So I, do I have to switch user? No, if it's not in that, it's okay. Right, because I may have to switch user. Right. So that may be a challenge. But obviously, you have. If Kiku can share it, pick it on WhatsApp and put it there. Are we clear? Right. So my technical team wants to project it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go now. So I'm going to the second line. So it says that it provides opportunities to both Ghanaians and foreigners looking to call Ghana world a home. Are we clear? Now, combined with Ghana's continual infrastructure world, I hope you can underline that. Because if you are discussing the, the factor condition, the factor condition, is that not it? Come again. The factor condition under the Portest Diamond. We are being told that Ghana has infrastructure development. So that is a, an advanced factor condition. Clearly showing that we have more advanced what? Factor condition. Are we clear? When we are discussing Ghana's advantages. So take note of that. And the safe business environment. Is that clear? Safe business environment clearly is an opportunity. Is that clear? A business environment clearly is an opportunity. So that would be the pestle. If as we were discussing pestle, that would have come. But that is an opportunity. And growing international or appeal clearly they are all opportunity it's clear that the real estate sector is set to propel the country forward as it's an investor's dream world come true so with this first two paragraphs i hope you've seen the points we have picked there let's go to the third paragraph a good starting point for understanding the Ghana's real estate is to look at the major players can you underline that underline the major players and why would this be important as I've already told you, stakeholder analysis. When we are using the power and what? Interest model. This information will be very relevant in analyzing that. Are we clear? Yes? Yes. Yes, yes. Even though the case provide, didn't provide all the stakeholders, his question is, uh, is, should we also consider other stakeholders like government and the others? Is that not it? And I'm saying that, yeah, we have to assume it. Exactly. You are going to put yourself in the position of the strategic manager of the company. So it's not about only the information provided. If you are in a business, exactly, you are the one working in this company. Government is part of the stakeholder. SNEED is part of them. Is that not it? GRA is part of them. So you have to go beyond the information provided. The only good thing is that this case has given us information on the key players. On the what? The key players. So you can use them, exactly, to answer the question in terms of the key players. And how we need to manage them. But the other ones which you must keep informed, the other ones which you must keep satisfied, the ones which you must give minimal effort to, all those ones you must what? Mention them and discuss in line with that. Are we clear? So please take note of that. So we have the real estate agent as a stakeholder. Exactly. And it was said that Ghana real estate sector in many ways is sustained by who? The real estate agent. Now, developers and landlords rely on them to sell and rent their property for, for, for a fee. Seekers rely on them to find properties that matches their taste and budget. Now, listing platforms depend on them to increase their real estate portfolio on their sites. Now, researchers need them. So, I hope you've seen their relevance or their power being discussed extensively here. I hope you are looking at it. What is their relevance? They are telling us here that what? Seekers rely on them. Who are the seekers? Customers. Customers rely on them. Researchers also need them. Is that not it? To know the current going rate for properties. I hope you are following. Then there isn't, I'm going to the third paragraph, there isn't any officially what? Recognized body for real estate in Ghana. So what will be the implication of that? Their power will be weak. Their power will be what? Because they have no recognized body. If they had a recognized body, then their power will be what? Strong. I hope you are getting the trick now. I'll be clear. Because if there's nobody organized, they may not be able to what? Demand higher rates. Now, if they are supposed to charge 10%, who cares? I'll be getting the point. You may be an agent and somebody will pay 5%. But if they were well regulated, there would have been a standard rate for commission. I'll be getting the point. So here, their power is what? Is weak.
five and redevelop by what? Developers. We are taking an advantage of that. So it's an opportunity. It's part of the opportunities we can take advantage of in the industry. So take note of that. In these cases, in, the, in cases where there are no redevelopment, these homeowners, some of whom are outside Ghana, rely on what? Property management services, such as Talis Property or Real Estate Agent, to handle what? Facility management or rental process for them. Are you with me? Yes. Any question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the substitute. Exactly. He's asking about substitute when it's five forces. So, landlord, homeowners, is that not it? And the builders, those who want to build themselves. It's part of the substitute. Exactly. So, when you look at the factors here, they are saying that that particular trend, exactly, is winning down. Why? Because, that, because of what? Because while this is on the decline, thanks to what? Thanks to what? Quality planning and options offered by who? Developers. I hope you are listening to me. Do you see where I'm picking the point from? Do you see where I'm picking it from? The same landlord and homeowners. Well, that's where I'm reading it from. It says, go to many Ghanaians prefer to build their own houses than to buy. Exactly. It says that what? While this is on the decline, thanks to what? To the superior quality planning and option offered by what? Developers. So this may not be a real threat. Because the developers are doing well. So that is on the decline. How we are following? So we cannot see this to be a major threat to our, or major substitute. Are we clear? So when you are discussing the substitute, that is the point you are going to use. Exactly. Even though the substitute exists, what is their performance? What is their what? performance in explaining that? So let's go to P3 now. Let's go to P3. So P3 is about the online portals, which is also a major player because they help to what? What is the impact of this? It helps to influence the demand and supply. Because with the internet portal, it will give more information on availability. Exactly. And the more information available, what will be the implication? Customers will make informed decisions. Customers will make what? Informed decisions. So this will influence the bargaining power of the supplier and what? And the customer. I hope you are listening carefully. So when you are using this point, the online portal, it will influence the bargaining power of what? the customer or the supplier, because the more information available, exactly, you cannot charge high prices. Because if I go to Tonaton and I search, I'll get the house. That is easily available. And we have examples here. Online platform like Tonaton, Mikasa, MLS, M MLS Technology, exactly, they are all part of it, of the various websites that offer what? Various rental opportunities for people or people to buy. Are we clear? So the more information, it will affect the competition. Are we clear? So take note of that. Now, let's go to the next issue. Investing in real estate in Ghana. Investing in what? Real estate in Ghana. Now, demand for, underline that, demand for upscale property. What is upscale property? Those for higher earners. Those for what? If you go to Devtraco, they have Devtraco Real Estate Development Company. Then they also have DevTraco Plus. I hope you are listening. DevTraco Plus is the upscale developer for those who have huge income to buy about $500,000 or $1 million. Are we clear? So Trasaco is in the realm of the apps. It's an upscale developer. Trasaco Valley is what? An upscale developer. They don't develop normal houses or normal real estate. They develop for high taste. Are we clear? So that is it. So demand for upscale property, a booming real estate market, and a friendly market for investors are some of the reasons why Ghana has become what? A top real estate investment world destination. Now, to that effect, there are different options for investing in real estate in Ghana. So, all this thing is opportunity, two of us. This is what? Opportunity for people to now come and invest or buy properties in Ghana. It's opportunity. So, what are the options available? I hope you've seen the options. Buying to let or rent property. Second option, buying a what? Selling. And what's the third option? Property or development. So if we as a company want to take advantage of any of them, we must take advantage. But let's look at it. As the name suggests, these properties investors buy and then rent it out 
they buy and then what? Rent it out. Now, these are usually managed by facility or managers. And if you saw from this case, are you aware VPL has an estate management company? Are you aware the company has an estate management company? If you go to page number, go to page number seven, estate management division. Have you seen it? Have you seen estate management division? Are you getting it? So we have a division that helps to maintain properties for people who buy them. So we can be able to take advantage of this opportunity for people who want to buy and rent. So there are people who are not in the country, in the US and all over, they want to invest in Ghana. So they'll buy Villagio, they'll buy any of this property, is that clear? And will rent it out. Then the estate management company, is that clear? Will make sure that they maintain the place and make sure they remit the money to them. Are we clear? So that is it. REI. I think where, where is the where is that? Uh, is the residential? Uh, I think it's, it's part of the things we have. Here. I think it's part of the example. I think the real estate. I think I have to get the meaning of that word. The REITS. I think it's an acronym. Right? It's an acronym, but I will get it. Real estate, something, something. Please, let, if you don't know, let's hold it there. <laughs> investment trust. Okay, thank you. Real estate investment or trust. But it was not explained in the, in the issues here. So let's leave it out. Are we clear? The ones we explained, I will deal with it, okay? Then the next one is the buying and selling. Buying and or selling. This is not straightforward, as we have been told here. Investors buy property at lower cost, renovate them, and sell them at a higher cost. Are we clear? To cover their new for or to cover up for the new or upgrade. Renovating houses to increase their value is called or is called or flipping. So essentially, investors flip houses to increase or their value and make profit. So is it an opportunity for us? Yeah, because we are a real estate development company. Some of these people could buy and ask us to uh, to develop it for them before they sell. Are we clear? So why not? It's an opportunity. Right? The next one is property development, which we are already into. Are we clear? We are already into property development. That's good news. Then let's go to the last one. But we could read that. Let's read that point because there are certain things we'll be picking from there. This is very capital intensive. What, what would that influence? Five forces. Five forces. This is very capital or uh, five forces. It will go for it. So we are picking all the points to use for the five forces. Are we clear? So it's capital intensive and it's often reserved for those who are into real estate development with this type of investment investor research the property to market to determine the best areas and what type of home communities we should build once this is done the properties are sold for what for profit it is important that detailed research is done in order not to turn a loss turn to a loss after investing so much into this. Are we clear? Now, this isn't limited to just residential development. Demand for retail space, I hope you at least underline that. These are all opportunity. Demand for what? Retail space, like what? The malls, especially leisure and what? Recreational world space. Are we clear? So that is part of the things we could develop. Let's go to the next one. And as the city expands, more people are looking to what? More people, uh, more people flock into it, and it's imperative that what? That new facilities are built to accommodate the savvy investor who can what? Capitalize on this develop, to develop commercial and recreational space that serve the populace and yield significant world returns. Accra is not the only city expanding. Another opportunity is coming. According to the GIPC, Kumasi and Takwadi are the next most popular cities. I hope you see the opportunity there. So opportunity to develop where Kumasi and what? Takradi. Are we clear? Boss, do you have the document? No, please. It's finished. Is anybody having an extra one? I'm not sure he's he's general. Anybody, somebody, yeah, somebody can volunteer one for him. Do you have an extra? Somebody has given it. Okay, bless God. <laughs> it is well. Right, let's go. So we are saying that there's opportunity. Let's go to page four. We are on page four now. Page four. We are being told here that there's opportunity in Kumasi and what? Takradi. But if you look at it, as we are aware, 
Exactly. VPL has no development in Kumasi and Takradi. VPL's development are all in Accra. Take note of that. Because most of you have not read the case. This may not come easily to you. <laughs> all their developments are in what? Accra. So there's opportunity to develop in Kumasi and what? Takradi. And Takradi, the good news is because of what? The oil and gas. Because of the oil and gas, we could take advantage of that. And Kumasi is also developing. Are we clear? So we could also take advantage of So these are opportunities the company may take advantage of. Are we clear? Then we go to the... Kumasi also recently saw the establishment of a mall. Is that not it? That's property development. So once there's recreation, all of that, and we have about a retail floor of 18,000 square meters, opportunities exist for further regional world development. So clearly, we have opportunity there. Are we clear? So VPL must go for that opportunity. Exactly. VPL must go for that opportunity. What's the next one? Selling land. We could also buy and sell land. Are we clear? And you see, the courts don't wait to buy land. Buy land. Wait has never run truer in Ghana than now. As the demand for real estate rises, developers are clamoring for lands in Accra prime areas. Now, the rush for land is going beyond these two areas like what? Oyarefa, Oyibi, East Legon, Hills, and more. In a few years, owners of land in this area can sell them off. So what is the opportunity for us as a company? We could also buy land banks. We could also invest in what? Land banks. That's an opportunity for us. Are we clear? We are not into that yet. We could also do that. Are we clear? That's it. Any question? So we are going to look at the next issue, which is deepening real estate in Ghana. How do we deepen real estate in Ghana? This is a research by Bank of Ghana, a research by BOG. It says that a recent survey by BOG showed that real estate developers finance their project from a wide range of sources. So we are looking at financing in the real estate industry. And I hope you are aware the it will affect the company. Our source of finance. I hope you are noting that down. So when we need to finance new projects, this information is relevant to influence our source of what? Finance. Don't forget that. Because the next, there will be two cases on this question. The first one will be normal issues. The second one will have financial issues. So get ready. Now, the survey indicates that most housing projects in Ghana are embarked on were self-financed. Underline that. They were all self-financed. That should tell you clearly <laughs> that no developer is getting free money from any bank. Are we clear? They are all self war finance. So let's go further. Representing about 72% of the entire finance option available for developers. So what is the majority of finance available? self war finance. If you don't have your own money, you can't develop. So what is the impact of that? On the five forces. Still on the five forces. What's the problem there? New entrants may struggle because there's no source of money. <laughs> there's no <laughs> free money anywhere for you to get and use to uh, develop property. Are we clear? The banks may offer it to you, but may be at a not competitive rate. Are we clear? Exactly. We could also discuss the existence of the almost non-existence of mortgage bank in Ghana. So we have Ghana Home Loans. We have Republic Bank. Those are the only two banks, exactly, who are said to be mortgage banks. But Ghana Home Loans is no more. Are you aware? Taken over by another Nigerian bank. Republic Bank is no more Ghanaian. Taken over by another. Are we clear? So looking at it, what is their commitment towards real estate development in Ghana? I'll be following. These are things you must discuss in context as we are explaining the question. Or explaining your, your solution to the examiner. Now, this development is not encouraging at the time, and this is a report from BOG themselves, so you can imagine. <laughs> at the time, okay, when efforts are being made to bridge the housing deficit in Ghana. Exactly. Additionally, some significant number of real estate developers depend on loans from who? From who? Domestic banks to partially finance some of their housing projects. Only two out of the 22 make use of loans from foreign or sources. So international financing is almost non-existent. Are we clear? International financing is almost what? Now, it's also evident that only four out of the 22 made use of mortgage financing. Can you imagine? Now, again, this, this might suggest the scope for developing mortgage finance industry in the country to help what? Boost the housing world delivery, which is telling you clearly we don't have a strong banking world support the sector. 
The result of the survey also showed, underline all of this, that cost of input, which is a threat here, cost of what? Input and domestic credit remain the key challenges, the threat, 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 threat. If you are doing so, this threat. Exactly. This is followed by what? Another, another threat, inadequate access to what? Land, another threat. I don't know whether you've seen three threats there. What is the first one? Cost of input. Or the second one? Access to domestic credit. Is that not it? What's the third one? Inadequate access to land. Exactly. Which is as a result of the what? The poor land tenor system in war in Ghana. Are we clear? We go to the next issue. Most of the respondents also stated that poor infrastructure development around the country, not in the main country, around where? Around the countryside inhibit development since most development are, developers have to bear what? The cost of infrastructure within the project area. Are we clear? So for example, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Regimano has what we call Katamanto Satellite Town. I don't know whether you've seen that. Kasa, Katamanto Is it Katamanto? Katamanto It is what? So they call it Katamanto Satellite Town. It's a development they did and sell it. If you go there, the road, they consider it themselves. The street light. Because there's nothing there defeating for the kind of estate they want to build. So they have to now do the work of government. Are we clear? That is the major threat. Exactly. A major threat to the development. Okay? Then also, we can leave that there. I think the rest is done. Any question? That's making them unaffordable to low-income or house owners. Are we clear? So that is a major threat. So their houses is unaffordable to low-income or earners. Clearly stated. So what factors could deepen or promote the real estate industry in war in Ghana. And all these factors should be seen from, from the point of opportunity. Are we clear? See them from the point of war opportunity. Because if actions are taken in that regard, it creates an opportunity for our war industry. I hope you are listening to it. So let's take them one after the other. A strong legal and regulatory environment. If we have that in place, what is the implication? It's an opportunity. Exactly, it's an opportunity. So, streamline the current land administration in Ghana, exactly, the systems and procedures, and all sector players, and provide a framework for market-based housing sector in war in Ghana. The next one. Establishment of land courts to handle and clear backlog of land-related war cases in court, which are inimical to the housing or in that. Are we clear? If we have, if a uh, Supreme Court takes a decision to set up a court, Purposely for land adjudication. Why not? There will be war. It's an opportunity. The next one. Land banks should be created by government for real estate. So government could take an area and say, this area, we are buying it. And when they buy it, exactly, they lease it to the real estate developers so that they can develop it at cheaper or rate. The next one. Government should open up the cement market by breaking the monopoly of gas and through of us. And that is happening now. So the monopoly of gas has been breached. Exactly. Therefore, but if you look at it still, cement price is still going up. <laughs> exactly. Even though gas's monopoly has been breached, cement prices are still all on the rise. What's the last one? Government should subsidize the cost of infrastructure by developing what? Site. But they're not doing that. And I've already given you the example of what they call the regime manual, developing what? The Katamansu site. Are we clear? So that is it. So we are done with this. Now, where are we coming to? We are leaving the environment. You're free, you you're bad. Them. Like I always say, <laughs> like I always say, you're free, you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. We are coming to the room now. So, where are we now? Veritas Properties Limited. So, when we are reading these particular issues, no more opportunity and trend. What are we looking at? Trend and what? Weakness. And because this case, my intention is to do the SOAR analysis, most of the issues here are basically straight. I did that intentionally so that we could use it to discuss the SOAR analysis in future. Are we clear? So when we, we use this, it will be a very interesting discussion. We'll use it to develop the aspirations and then determine the results they should expect in future. So get ready. So let's discuss where it is. Are you ready? So this information is a measure of relevant information from Regimanual Gray Estate 
and then Dev Traco, which I've already told you. Are we clear? So let's move now. Very test was established in 1994 by myself, a young and dynamic world <laughs> architect who returned to Ghana after resigning from Gray Construction. So you saw, you saw the name Gray. That should tell you Reggie Manuel Gray. Exactly. Reggie Manuel Gray is, is by Regina Botwe and Emmanuel Botwe. So Regina and Emmanuel, called Reggie Manuel. Exactly. It's a husband and wife. It's a family business. So Reggie Manuel and exactly Regina Botwe and what Emmanuel Botwe came together to form Reggie Manuel. So they had consultancy with a U.S. company called Gray Construction. Are we clear? So that is where they bought their expertise from. Are we clear? So take note of that. So I'm only using that so that we can make the issues more easy to identify with. Okay? Now, Sigma's dream, and I like that, that clearly is the vision. They will not tell you vision, they'll tell you dream. So their dream is to establish a world-class real estate company and replicate the same standard and success of Great Construction Limited in Ghana. So what are they trying to do? They want to bring foreign into Ghana. <laughs> So that is their dream. That is their vision. Are we clear? That is their vision. Now, Veritas has successfully developed two distinct product lines. And align that. Because their product line will influence their competitive strategies. You remember? Their business level choices. Are we clear? All those things will influence that. So they have how many product lines? Two product lines. These are the low to middle and the middle to all. Upper. How we are looking at it? The what? the low to middle and the middle to our upper segment so it looks like they are taking advantage of the various components of what the market they are not looking at upscale they are also looking at low income are we clear so take note of that now their prices from low to mi middle income ranges from what i hope you are seeing the numbers there it ranges from ninety thousand dollars to how much so that is for the low the, the low to middle i hope you can find yourself there I hope you can find yourself between the low and the <laughs> from ninety thousand dollars to how much two hundred thousand dollars. Juju, Ju, I hope you are following there, or you are following the upper one, or you are following you are because the upper one is around is three hundred and eighty thousand to six hundred and fifty thousand. Have you seen that? Yes, that's the range, and that that has changed. Now the <laughs> the upper one are in the million. Exactly, you have one million dollar. <laughs> it is well now. I'll go back to where we were. Now, this has been the strongest market segment. Underline that. Underline that. This has been what? The strongest market segment. So, which one is the strongest market segment? The low toward middle. So, that is where we must direct our effort. Exactly. So, the low to middle is where we are getting what? The majority. 60% of the company sales come from there. A key factor to the success is what? I hope you know that is strength already. A key factor to the success is what? Is that they allow customers to add on rooms at a later date as their resources allow them. So when they build the house, they'll leave a space behind. So we'll see kind of bar. Now the beer can. How are you You can extend your building. How are you following? So that is the way. It's a strength. Exactly. It's a strength. And I hope you know that the product line is also a strength. I hope you are aware of that. They have variety of what products. It's a strength. I hope you are with me, you. you. They have variety of what products. But I hope you are aware that the, the founder has expertise. I hope you are aware the founder has expertise. That's a strength. I don't know whether you are seeing it too. <laughs> so even with the first two paragraphs, how many strengths have we identified? The expertise of the... I shouldn't have been telling you because it's, a, it's, a, it's an assignment. <laughs> But we have a strength. What is the first one? Expertise of the founder. Are we clear? In the first paragraph. Is that clear? Because Sigmund is an architect who has returned from the US having worked with great construction. Clearly, expertise. Then we are being told that what? They have two distinct products clearly dealing with the various market segments. So they have unique product lines. That's a strength. Are we clear? Then also we are being told here that they offer expandability for their product. Are we clear? Further telling us more about what their product. Now, for the middle to upper segment, the price range from 380,000 to, so please add the three zeros. 650,000. Are we clear? So that is the range. Currently, 
The average house in East Airport in Accra is how much? Now we know where East Airport is. Pintes. Are we clear? Now, the East Airport Estate is the first large-scale gated community in Ghana, offering amenities such as what? Security, children's playground, a clubhouse with tennis court, swimming pool, maintain green areas, and also facilities such as what? Offices, commercial center, schools are well, well planned. All of that. Strength. Are we clear? So I'll give you us exactly strength. Now the company, and I like this, the company holds the dominant position in the market. Clearly, they are the market leader. They are the market war leader. Joe, your question. Yeah. Yes. No, they are the ones who build that estate. Yeah, it's for them. Anything here is for them. And I'm talking here about Reggie Manuel. I'll be with me. They built the one on the spin test, right? So he's saying that the issue there about the East, Air, the East Airport estate, exactly, is here a strength because the information is not relating to them. But I'm saying that this is what they have done. They were the first company to build the, the what? The first large scale gated community in Ghana. And it, it, if you look at the property, if you are flying over Accra and you are almost getting to the airport, it's the most nicest thing to ever see about Ghana. You see, the roofs are, are still brown and red. Exactly. But if you are passing some estate, the roofs have changed color. I mean, no Their roof is still, uh, still brown. She clearly tell you that the material they have used is correct. I'll be following. It's the first and still the nicest. And it has been sold out. There's no place to buy any. <laughs> so let's go now. The company hold the dominant position in the market. So they are market leaders. So that's why I was telling you that the question you may have is what are the factors that may threaten the position of Veritas properties as the market leader? That is five forces. I'll be clear. That is all the five forces. What are the factors that will threaten their position as the dominant or the market leader in the real estate world industry. That's five us. So I'll be putting that question across and I hope you come home well. <laughs> I hope your answers will come well. So be careful. So let's go now. A few developers are offering products in the middle and upper end of the market. But none can compete. Strength to. Strength to. None can what? Compete with size, scope, and appeal as VPL has or Veritas has. That's strength. Now, their customers are mainly resident and non-resident. Non-resident, particularly vibrant, is as, it's forms 60% of the company's customer world base. What is the implication for that? They are, they, are, they are most dominant, or the majority of their customers are foreign world or non-resident. Clearly, it should tell you that they'll be having a lot of issues of forex. Exactly, exactly. Foreign exchange translation because they are selling in dollars. I'll be listening. They'll be making payments in dollars, so they must manage foreign exchange world risk exposure. I'll be following because majority, sixty percent of their customers are non-resident. They are foreigners, so they'll be paying via dollar. If they are even supposed to pay for estate management services, they'll pay with dollar. Are we clear? Because if they are using the buy and rent option, where they'll buy and ask them to rent for them. Clearly, they'll be making payments in dollar. And if we are to even remit their rent to them, we have to remit in what? In dollars. So I hope you are looking at the, the contest here. So that is it. So it's, it's a key issue when it comes to uh, the risk. Exactly. Or we look at it as a threat. Okay? So let's go further. Majority of the customers arrange their own financing. You see, they don't have a headache there. They all arrange their own financing. But the company works with established mortgage finance schemes in Ghana. Now, in spite of the seeming insurmountable challenges in the industry, VPL has endeavored to build and cater for all categories of income earners while remaining true to the core value, and I that, the core value of what? Quality. I hope you know the implication of that. The core value will influence their objectives. Exactly. Because your objectives should help you to meet your core values. Okay? Now, in 20 years of existence, the company has provided how many? 4,000 housing units and still counting. Now, we are going to hear some of their construction. 
The construction of Meridian Garden at East Legon, Accra. Eagle Place at Community 13, Thelma. Exemplify the employment, and align that, another strength, the employment of modern forms of building technology to meet changing trends. It's a strength. The company is able to use what? Modern form of building technology to meet what? The changing trend in the world industry. The Balloon Gate Estate is at Kwabenya and Kaneshi. I changed it to Kaneshi. Do you have Balloon Gate Estate in Kaneshi? No. Should, there's one at Kwabenya. I think there are some in, uh, in uh, Spin Test, right? Do you have Balloon Gate at Spin Test? Oh, you don't know Balloon Gate. Balloon, you don't know Balloon Gate. <laughs> Let me leave it there. <laughs> I don't want trouble. The company is currently exploring another issue. So look at this. They are currently exploring. That will form part of aspirations when we are discussing the SOAR analysis. When we are discussing the SOAR analysis, it will form part of what? The company's aspirations. What do they seek to achieve? Yeah. Over 20 years of existence, yes? Oh, yes, obviously. It can be mentioned as a strength. The company has existed for overall 20 years. It's a strength. Are we clear? So, the company is currently exploring options to resort to renewable energy in the development of estates to reduce the reliance on the traditional hydro or thermal energy or mix. Part of the aspirations. Now, very test latest project, and align that, is the Cantamanso Satellite Town Development. But I change it to what? We are refer satellite town, which is one of the ongoing projects and is aiming to develop how many houses? 17,000 houses. That's very ambitious. Is that clear? In varied clusters. Okay? So they have the board. So this will bring about governance issues. This will bring about governance or issues. For those of you who are the normal class student, we haven't discussed governance. But look at the issues here. We'll be discussing them in future. So when it comes to the board, they give us information on composition. They give us information on what? Composition. Now, what does the code of best practice say about the number of board members? Number of board members. What is the minimum? Minimum is what? Hey, Jehovah. Minimum is what? Eight to fifteen. Eight to all fifteen. Please, these are not okay. Those of you who are doing revision. I hope you will not make me sack you from the class. But your contribution is very important here. So the, the, the best practice provided by the code of best practice is that you must have a range of what? Eight to all fifteen. Are we clear? So that is it. So when you have that, but looking at it, what is their composition? They are five. How many board members? Five. But it's not a problem. That's what the code says. But once they have an uneven number, it's good for decision making. So five is not bad. Are we clear? But one thing I see from this board here is that they have dual role played by the MD and what? The board chair. Are we clear? And then there's something that may seem like related party also. There's a, a brother on the board. They bear the same name. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's necessary for decision making. Because normally, uh, yeah, his question is whether the number in terms of odd or even may help with decision making. Are we clear? Normally it helps. Are we clear? Because when you read situations where there must be decision making, the odd helps. Because one person may help to bring about diversity. Are we clear? So take, take, take note of that. Then, as I said, there's, a, there's some related party here. Because there's a brother on the board. We have not been told who he is. They just mentioned the name. So maybe the unseen information may tell us more about it. Are we clear? Yeah. No, you can consider it to be a weakness. Sometimes, if it's, uh, it's even, exactly, the board chair sometimes may not take part in decision making. He may recuse himself when it's time to make decision. He may not vote. Are we clear? To allow for that unevenness so that we can help with decision making. Yeah, his question is whether if it is even, exactly, wouldn't it pose a challenge when it comes to decision making? And I'm saying that in most cases, the board chair could recuse himself 
so that the number may become uneven to help with the decision making. Are we clear? Why not? So that is it. Let's go further. So there are directors here, but we will need more information on why each of them were appointed. Are we clear? Because the, the Franklin we see here is somebody who has served as a director of ADMI. Is that clear? And was, has now become the vice chair of the board. Highly versatile. Is that clear? And he has a track record in the industry. He's currently the vice president of Greta. So that is good. Because we have a stakeholder or major representative on the board. I hope you understand it. Because Greta is a major player. Are you aware? For what we discuss. So if one of our board members is a key person in a major stakeholder, doesn't he play to our advantage? Why not? Are we clear? He's a member of our Greta. Take note of that. Then the second one is, uh, is Derek. And we have been told that Derek is an executive director. So that means that Derek is likely working in management. I hope you are listening. He's an executive director. So clearly, it shows that this guy is not only working on the board, he works as part of management. That's why he's an executive director. So please take note of that. Then, uh, Mr. Benghazi, we are only told he's a director. Whether he's executive, non-executive, we are not told. But as I said, further information will help us to understand it further. Then, Mr. Colin Amankwa has also been called a director. But looking at all the board, can you see that they have experience? Can you see they have experience? They have experience and exposure. Because Derek went to where? Uh, Oxford Brooks University. It's not the Quanchia University. <laughs> Are we clear? So all these people, if you look at the Colin, Colin is uh, an architect and a surveyor at the same time. That's expertise. Are we clear? So the board is well composed in terms of experience and exposure. Are we clear? So take note of that. Now, we go to the next thing. So as I said, there will be questions on this. One of the things I want you to keep in mind, which is what will be coming in the unseen, is institutional shareholders. Institutional or... Right. The reason is that Regimanua has a joint arrangement with what? SNIT. Regimanua has a joint arrangement with what? SNIT. So government may come into partnership with, Reg with VPL, the company we have here, to construct affordable housing. So your question that you may have will have something in that respect. I hope you are following. A decision to come into a, a collaboration with government to construct affordable world housing. There will be a question on that. So please anticipate that. Okay? Let's go on now. Support division. Support division. Now, Veritas has always committed to producing houses of much less quality to meet customer satisfaction. And has achieved this by establishing other world, other world division to produce complementary goods and services to support their core business. Please, what is that? This is what we call, uh -huh. this is what we call related diversification. Related or that's unsolved growth vector. So your technical bearing is the unsolved growth vector metrics, specifically diversification. Specifically or diversification. What type of diversification? Related. Related diversification. What type of related diversification? This is horizontal. This is what? Yeah, so that's the breakdown. So when we get to that, we'll discuss. Are we clear? So it's a type of growth strategy where you diversify. This diversification is related because it's in line with our core business. It's in line with what? Our core business. And it's also within our scope. So it is horizontal. It is all horizontal. So please take note of that. Let's go to the divisions. The first division is the concrete product division. And we have been giving information to that effect on what they do. The division began as a project related to the production site for what? For what? Asphalt and concrete product for very test limited. To ensure effective supply of what? So what is that? So if you look at it, they are supplying the company or input. So somebody will say, are they not backward integration sort of? <laughs> you see that kind of thing. So when it gets to that, we'll discuss it. Are we clear? Because once you have a company who supplies you your input, clearly that will be what we call vertical integration, specifically backward integration. 
We'll be discussing that when we take answer in future. Are we clear? So for now, just go and read the answer of growth vector or matrix. Clearly on that. Are we clear? So Veritas has a construction product division. Okay? Concrete product division. So the, if we go to the next paragraph, they said that the division recently expanded on the private market. Look at it. It means that they are now selling to the public. The division is not just supplying Veritas, but they are now all supplying the general public. They supply the private market. Are we clear? And we are being told that as of today, the division now supply private household, both small and medium-sized company, as well as what? International operating companies, both local and what? Foreign finance companies. Obviously. Okay, so this is a very good division, supplying not only us, but also selling to public or private and then what? To other people. Let's go to the next division. The next division is the estate management world division. This division was established for the day-to-day -day operation and care of what? The prestigious home. And you need a division like this if you are dealing in buy and sell. Because when people buy, or buy and rent, sorry, if people buy your property and want you to rent it for them, exactly, you need an estate management world division to care for the property. Are we clear? So here we are saying that it was established to care for the prestigious home and other amenities within the estate. This enables homeowners to control their expenditure, is that not it, while improving service delivery. It allows the property owners to focus on what they do best, that is living management of non-core support and associated services toward the property specialist. Are we clear? That is it. So we are done. The only thing now is to read the outlook. Are we clear? And that is where we'll be getting information on the aspirations. On the what? Aspiration. Because here, the chairman and managing director is about to tell you what he thinks about the future. Are we clear? So that will inform our aspiration. So whenever we, got, we get uh, our strength, which we are already getting, is that not it? We already have our opportunities. We get the aspirations, and then we can develop the results or outcome we need. Okay? So I uh, maintain, now the chairman is talking. Who is the chairman? It is what? <laughs> so the chairman is saying that I uh, maintain time and again that the enviable achievement of the VPL bank so far represents only what? 20% of the overall vision. With hard work, dedication to our corporate values and faith in God, we shall achieve our full potential. We have never wavered in our commitment to the VP hallmark of what? Of what? And the line demo, convenient. These are the things we normally want to do. Convenience, environmental serenity, secure living, and superb infrastructure and estate management to our service. That is telling you our main objectives, things we want to achieve. We remain, we remain focused on our corporate values, which is quality, professionalism, dependability, and more timeliness. Are we clear? Now, Veritas is about to explore opportunities. I hope you are listening. They are about to explore what? Opportunities where? In the West African South region to take advantage of what? The increased demand for housing communities in the sub region, as our market is derived from the acute housing shortage. So, what is that? Porter's diamond. Porter's world diamond. The only way we can go out successfully is when we have an advantage as a country. And as I said, there will be a question for you to discuss the advantages and disadvantages Ghana has. Exactly. When you compare our industry. To the West African world industry, specifically for the real estate. That is the major thing we've seen there. Now, our vision is to replicate what we stand for, exactly, on the international platform, and the plans are far advanced in the formation of what? So there are two options. Two options. We call it mode of entry. Mode of what? Entry. How to go into the international market. The mode you use to enter. You either go to form your own company or you go for strategic partnership. Is that not it? Or you can even go with your... That's the MDI is your own company, formation. Exactly. You can go for joint ventures. You can go for strategic alliance. You can, exactly. So there are various options you can use if you want to go international. So we call it mode of what? Entry. Mode of entry. 
And which countries are we going into? Sierra Leone or Liberia. And where is that? West Africa. So the protest diamond will focus on what? Will focus on what? The West African real estate world industry. Are we clear? Because the protest diamond is not comparing only countries. It compares regions. Remember? It also compares what? Regions. Not just countries. Also the regions. So be careful with that. Then, as operators in the private sector, listen to this also, we are delighted at the current policy trend of PPP, I'll be aware, private, public, private partnership for development in our country. So what is the, what is the question here? I've already told you there will be a question with what? A collaboration with SNIT to build affordable world housing. I'll be aware with you. So there will be a question on what? VPL collaborating with what? SNIT to build affordable world housing. So get ready to appraise that investment. Get ready to what? Appraise such what? An investment. Now we believe that it is crucial for private sectors to play partners to, with the public sector to implement measures that will ease the burden on the average worker in the acquisition of what? A house. So they want to play a part. So once we are done with this, we have been given the financial statement. And what is, the, what is the relevance of this? Is to calculate the ratios. So everybody must appraise the financial statement. We've been giving the PNL, the changes in equity, and all the balance sheet. So determine the position and performance of the company. Determine all the position and performance of the company for the last two years, which is the 2018 and 2019. The 2020 financial statement is still under audit, so we have not, we have not submitted it. <laughs> Any question as we round up? Any question? Any question? So, you must ask questions, or we will not leave you. Any question on the case before I send you my own question? Because you very soon expect mine. Is that not it? So, ask any question that will help you to understand the case before I submit my questions to you, both in person and online. I'm ready. At least we we'll take five questions, we'll shut down. It's about 7.45. Mike, are we streaming on YouTube? Are we getting following? <laughs> this is what? Right. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So good answer. Yes. But what about the country? Very good. So basically, uh, his question is that, looking at the case we have, all the issues discussed on the diamond is about Ghana. It's about war, Ghana. But the question is, what about the country that we are going into? Or the region we are going into? Are we clear? Now, that's why I said, if you go back, is that clear? And you refer to that November 2019 question, specifically on the tourism industry. You realize that much was said about just Ghana. And the discussion was that all these points are the advantages we have. Are the war, the advantages we have. We are not talking about the external countries. So if we have that advantage, is that clear? Then it may seem that we are in a better position than the other countries. This is how we are getting it. So just talk about what Ghana have. Exactly. And assume that other West African countries do not have it. I hope you are fine there. That is it. Or the country you are going into does not have it. Exactly. Those are the factors that has positioned Ghana to have an advantage over the world, the other West African countries. Are we clear? So my advice is that everybody should go and read what? November 2019 question. Specifically, it's on the website of IC. If you download it, question number one. For test diamond. Pick it up. That was on the tourism industry. Exactly. So kindly do that for all the real estate industry. When you look at the way it was answered, you can pick the ideas from there in answering the question. Are we clear? Right. The second question. Yes. Hey, we are at the power. I hope we are in the spirit. Yes. 
Ja. Yes. Ja. Schau. Sure. The environment, ja. Yeah. So, don't worry. When we look at the, his question is that in the ICA manner, most of the time, the international issues are mainly about the environment, like the protest diamond. And all. There's no issue of mode of entry. There's no discussion on the race. But I don't think you are telling the truth. Only the mode of entry is not there. But do you know we have the EPRG framework, which is telling us about the orientation when you are going international. Now, when you go, I'm coming, let me help you. When you go to the manual, there's international investment appraiser. Is there? That one talks about also the risk that you may have to face when you are going international. Okay. So the only thing which was not mentioned is the mode of entry. But look, listen to something. The manual still talks about mode of external relationship. Talking about joint ventures, is that not it? Strategic alliance. So those can also be used to go international. So why not? So they may not have to re-emphasize it once they're giving you various ways, is that clear, of having external relationship. Clearly, it's a way of also showing that what you can use it to go all international. Are we clear? So it's not there. There's no mode of entry, but those can be assumed to be most you can use to all go international. Yeah. Any other questions? Julie, you. Any other question? She's already packed her bag. The <laughs> question, no, I shake him with Kakra. The question has not come. Only the kids cry are free. <laughs> it is what. Any other? Any other questions? Suggestions? Yes, yes. Everybody must work. The ratios, yes. You have to calculate the ratio. Yes, I will bring it before we meet in the next meeting. So you must, you should have started your analysis, looking at all the issues there. You can even do your, your SWOT. Is that not it? You can even do your test. I've already given the areas that we are going to do five forces, four test diamond, stakeholder analysis, and then the SWOT analysis. Four issues. I've already shared with you. Are we clear? So, stakeholder, the power and what? Interest. I said that. Five forces. I've said that. Four test diamond. We'll discuss it in this same case. Is that not it? And then also what? The SOAR analysis, which we have on the board. The strength, opportunity, aspirations, and what? Result. Are we clear? So, that is it. So, if there's no other question, yes? No, it will be. Two set of questions. Are we clear? There will be two set of questions. The first five and the second five. So normally I'll give you ten questions on the case. Are we clear? First five, second five. Yeah. Any other question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically. And then you discuss the conclusion, which is what? The impact on profitability. As I've always said, for five forces, all those factors should what? Eventually impact what? The profitability of the sector. Are we clear? Yeah. No, those results should be determined by you. Exactly. Using any of the models, like balance scorecard, Fitzgerald, or performance pyramid. Exactly. The revision students will understand me better. <laughs> Those are all various models to be able to develop your results or KPIs. Are we clear? So that is it. So if there's no match, let me share an information. I'm not going off yet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see them. Those political and legal issues in the external environment mostly could be issues on the pester. How about the point? Could be used to discuss because anytime you are talking about pester, it's political, economic. Yeah. And those, the changes in those factors 
have influence on the organization, either an opportunity or a threat. Are we clear? So that is it. So my conclusion is that the die has been cast. Questions are going to be rolled out on this case. For those who have joined us uh, live on uh, YouTube, this is the last time you are watching us live on YouTube. There will be no further broadcast of this. And we'll be having discussion on the solutions to the questions provided in the next meeting we shall be having. So the questions to be provided before you come. You solve it, we meet together, and then we discuss it. I will try and bring mine. If I don't see your own, mine will not be discussed. Because it's a revision class. Are we clear? Right. You said? I'm not marking. Your solution will be in front of you. And you will mention what you have written to me. Exactly. So you discuss whatever you have been able to put together to me. Right. So thank you so much for all those joining us online. Yeah. So those who have already joined us for the weekday, we have a weekend session. That is on Sunday, 12 o'clock to 4. So those joining us online, we thank you so much. This is Aspire Professional Consult. We are live across the country. Tamali, Kumasi, Takradi, all over the country. <laughs> you can join us for our tuition program. Thank you so much. All the best. An e learning platform created by Aspar Professional Consult, a registered partner in learning of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana. The Aspar Mobile App is created for aspiring chartered accountants and, of course, for people who have interest in accounting. Aspar brings trainee accountants together, allowing for open communication through live video sessions or face to face classroom lectures. Let me show you what I mean. Maybe you are traveling out of town or visiting a sick granny, but you're worried about missing out on the strategic case study lecture, which is crucial for completing your ICAG program to secure your dream job. That's why you need the Aspire app. Aspire app gives you access to a whole library of recorded videos, audio, eBooks, and documents from verified and qualified lecturers in the field. Aspire also gives students access codes to join face-to-face -face Zoom video calls, allowing you to ask your questions and join in discussions. So, whether you're a student member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, an SHS graduate, an MBA or first degree holder looking to qualify as a chartered accountant, Aspire is the app for you. Aspire is secure and very mindful of your student details. Use Aspire on your desktop, tablet, all on the go. Register for free and sign up to start using Aspire app today. Go to AspireProConsult.com or visit the App Store or Play Store. Aspire mobile app. Life made easy. So, how do we get the Aspire app working? Let's start from the beginning. Depending on the device you have, whether PC, iOS or Android, Go to your App Store and search for Aspire Professional Consult and click Download. Set up a new account by creating your own unique username and password and complete the process by clicking Register. The app interface opens and you click to open the Register portal to complete a form to choose your program. You will get an instant mail with your bill and unique student number. Make payment via Momo using the student ID as a reference and you will be granted access to your subject portal. And that's it. You can now have full access to our library of recorded videos, documents, ebooks, and audio files at your own convenience. 
as Power Apostle gives you opportunity to receive job alerts, buy books, and book a training all at a go. As Power Mobile App, life made easy.